Welcome to the Bullington Capital Report, hosted by Bill Bullington. For the next hour, you'll receive information on current market conditions and trends that could affect your financial future. If you have a question for Bill, you can participate in today's program by calling 216-901-0945. That's 216-901-0WHK. You can also reach Bill by going to his website, BullingtonCapital.com. So without any additional delay, here's the host of today's program, Bill Bullington. Well, welcome back. Whew. That seemed like a long, short week. <laughs> anyway, hey, I'd like to first start off by thanking everybody that came out to Thursday night. That was great. The weather was really bad. So, well, actually, it cleared up a little bit by the time the seminar started. But thanks for showing up. It was a, uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, in the future, I'm going to start to do these a little more frequently, uh, but I want to break them down. Instead of doing two parts in one night, I'm going to do two separate ones that are shorter. So I think that will probably be a relief to uh, everybody, <laughs> not having to listen to me that much. but uh, um, And also just uh, a little easier. So we'll, we're going to cut them down. They're going to be roughly... About 45 minutes, and then I'll uh, hang around and answer questions because that's really where people, I, I really think people get the uh, lot of value, a lot of benefit from doing meetings like this is being able to ask and, and get their questions answered. So stay tuned. That's developing. Uh, we had talked a little bit at the seminar. Actually, we talked a lot about the upcoming website, the sister station or sister site to Bullington Capital, and that's look out for the bull.com. Yeah, uh, I did copyright that, by the way. I went back to check, and I saw that uh, uh, Schlitz Malt Liquor had not copyrighted it <laughs> back from the 70s. That's not where I took the uh, – I, I wasn't thinking about it in those terms. I was thinking about looking out for the bull, all the bull that, you know, it's always circling around Wall Street and stocks in general. But uh, – and then it happened to dawn on me, boy, I wonder if uh, the Schlitz Malt Liquor Company had actually copyrighted that, and uh, and they hadn't. So, well, not copyrighted, but uh, yeah, it was copyright. Yeah, I think it was copyright or trademarked it. Yeah, trademarked. So anyway, I applied and got the trademark. So I guess I can, I guess it's safe for me to use. It is a, a pretty common phrase anyway. So that's a, uh, that's going to be coming up. So stay tuned for that because it's uh, look out for the bull. Um, it's for traders. You know, I can get a lot of uh, um, a mixed feeling. I mixed emotions about trading from a lot of different people and uh, trading and investing are not the same thing. They're not. And you always hear Warren Buffett and all these guys talking about, well, you shouldn't trade. Most traders die broke. And that's true. Yeah, it is. It's true. Um, but you don't want to be most traders and you can make a very good return on trading. They just don't know how. Quite frankly, they're too big to do it anyway. You've got more than a, a couple million bucks. You're not going to be able to trade, not with that kind of money, um, because, well, you will in certain market environments. I shouldn't say that. The vast majority of the time, it's going to be very difficult to make any money when you're, when you're doing it with millions. If you're not doing it with millions, it's not nearly as difficult. In fact, it can be quite profitable. So I look at it as a hobby. It's a uh, fun. Actually, I keep kidding around it's I, I think it's the most fun you can have without going to jail <laughs> and uh, so that's why the website's going to be up there and I'm going to teach people how not to lose a lot of money you know trading is risky it's aggressive but not if you do it the right way well it'll always be aggressive uh, it just ha doesn't have to cost you a lot of money and uh, handling your losses is the key if you're going to trade now if you're going to be an investor it's a different story altogether uh, investing is a lot different. I happen to be a quantitative investor, the same as Ben Graham was, who was Warren Buffett's first employer and graduate school teacher. So um, I, there are things that I agree with on uh, for a ton of different things, and I think it really helps to have a flexible mind, uh, a flexible, actually a flexible mindset. There's no one best way to invest or trade or to make money in, in financial markets. There is, however, there are probably, probably anyway, better ways for you as an individual investor to make money. 
And you won't know what they are until you're exposed to them, until you try them. Now, you might have an idea, especially if you're above the age of 50, you'll have an idea of what you might like and what might what you might not like. And uh, if your sole purpose is to make money and you don't care much about anything else, then you can trade or invest, which is kind of what I do, because that's more important to me than anything else, just that I'm able to make some money over time. If you have a uh, inclination towards buying stuff and hanging on to it forever, okay, then as an investor, you'd better get really, really, really good at reading financial statements, and you'd better study businesses to figure out which businesses will actually even be here 10 years from now. And I can tell you that thought does not cross the mind of somebody who is a buy and hold investor 99 out of 100 times. 99 people who say, I'm a long-term investor who are going to basically buy stuff and hold on to it, never think about whether or not that company will be here 10 years from now or what they'll be doing 10 years from now if they're still around. And IBM's a great example of that. That stock has performed horribly over the past 20 years. Not very good. Like I said, it's like horrible. In fact, that stock peaked uh, in 1998, it's barely above the high price it got in 1998. It was 140 bucks in 1998. It's 167 today. Let me put that in perspective. That's like a $14 stock being $16. Same percentage movement. And if you're going to tell me you're going to be happy 18 years later, you're lying. You're lying to yourself. You're lying to me. <laughs> you will not be happy with that. So that's what I meant by looking at what they're doing. IBM is not doing the same things they did 18 years ago. The only thing that's the same about IBM is the name. They kept the name. And a lot of clever marketing companies will do that. They'll keep the name because they know people have an affinity to it. So, and I'm going to change my whole tone of voice right now because uh i'm getting tired of myself <laughs> i'm getting tired of uh of sounding like a school teacher and an elementary school teacher the uh uh it's tough but those are you know and the reason i take that tone is those are very important points and the the people and you know who you are you recognize what i'm saying you're the, actually the ones that respond to that very negatively <laughs> because you realize the truth in it the, uh, the people that aren't like that are laughing because they know people like that. <laughs> and uh, so I'll stop. But if you're going to, and just let me clarify, if you want to be a long-term investor where you, you know, like Warren Buffett, then you need to pick companies who are going to be in business 10 years from now and will be doing the same things they are today. There's good news and there's bad news for that. The good news is the list will not be very long for you to have to look at. You can take any technology company and throw them out the window. We have no idea what they will be doing 10 years from now. Uh, we, won't even be, we won't have any idea whether or not the semiconductors that they're using, like you look at Intel. You know, Intel suffered a very long drought, not a good time period. Why? Well, Intel didn't think that the uh, cell phones and iPads and all that were really a threat to PCs. At least that was the impression I got reading the uh, management's discussions over the years. They didn't think that was a big deal, that you know PCs were still going to dominate. And guess what? They didn't. People moved to cell phones. They say, well, how can Intel make that kind of mistake? Well, they all look, look at IBM. Look at the thousands of companies that have, have been delisted or went into bankruptcy or were bought out by another company because their business went to crap, basically. Yeah, that happens all the time. So buy and hold investing is incredibly difficult. It's incredibly difficult. You've got to try to identify companies that are going to be in business 10 years from now doing the same things they're doing today. Who will be doing that? Hershey's will be. You can bet on that. A lot of the Procter & Gamble products will still be the same. I mean, people are still going to brush their teeth. People are still going to wash their dishes and, you know, and their clothes. They uh, might be wearing different types of materials, but 
you can bet they're still going to clean them. So those are the types of companies um, that uh, you would want to look at if you wanted to be a buy and hold investor. And, and I don't know why I would even talk a whole lot about this. In fact, I'm going to stop because I don't personally, I don't agree with it. I think that is too hard. I think there are easier ways, more logical ways of managing a portfolio. And, and by the way, that don't involve indexing. The uh, indexing for me is the last choice. If, if it's the last thing I can do on the planet, that's what I want to do. Yeah, if I don't have any other choices, if I were given the choice between uh, stocks, bonds, cash, or real assets, things you can put your hands on, and uh, the only choice in the stock box was an index, like, I'm going to say, okay, I'll take the index. But that ain't how Warren Buffett made all of his money. <laughs> the, uh, so I'd rather have individual securities. But that, that's me. I'd rather have individual securities. I'm going to buy, I'm going to diversify uh, sufficiently. And sufficient, sufficient diversification, I guess, really depends on who you're talking to because that's just like politics and religion. You know, there are beliefs about money and money systems that are as strong as politics. When you hang out in my industry very long, you find out really quickly people have hardcore beliefs about how you should manage your money. Same as they do politics, same as they do religion. It's amazing. In fact, I've come up with a uh, little theory that people operate exclusively on belief systems on everything in their lives. But, you know, that's for somebody else's radio program. <laughs> Mine is uh, focusing on investing and investment planning. People very, they, they don't spend a whole lot of time planning their investments. And I understand you know, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff written. You're going to read and you're going to spend a lot of time trying to understand and know just to realize that you didn't need to know that. Okay. Unfortunately, that's part of the process. And there's nothing that we can really do about that. That's why I'm doing this show. A big part of this show is to try to cut down that learning curve. One of the ways to cut down the learning curve is to explain various concepts the, it, the best that you can. And I'm going to try to break it down for you the best that I can. Not a buy and hold investor, not an indexing investor. You know, people look at that all the time. Well, look at the long term returns on that. Yeah, but it's had a 20 year negative return. Can you afford to have another 20 year negative return in your lifetime? Can you afford that? We just came through a, a period that was over 10 years. 10 years. Let me say that one more time 10 years <laughs> with a negative return. If you can take that, buy sure, you know, buy the S and P five hundred, no problem. If if you like that, then that's what you need to do. I just don't want to do that. I don't want to go ten years because, as poor as my luck is, the day I retire is when we start a new one of those ten year periods, <laughs> and then I'll be back to work. <laughs> but the uh, no, ten years is is just too long. And uh, and Warren Buffett, you know, John Bogle, they'll say, well, you know, that's just the way it goes. Well, maybe that's the way it goes for you. I'll take a slightly lower return if I have to, as long as I don't have a negative return over 10 years. I don't care what your return in the long run is. I might not be here to, to benefit from that. The, uh, so I want to take a strategy. And, and b by the way, everybody wants to beat the market. We all try to beat the market. That's what we're doing. That's the number one name in the game. Try to be ahead of what you could do by doing an index. Uh, understand that you won't beat it every year. Understand that you might even go for five years. You might be lagging the index for a, by a mile for a while. Yeah, hey, that rhymed. The, uh, <laughs> but if, you're, if your strategies have logic, like real logic, like they're based on something other than emotion, hunches, instincts, an article that you read somewhere in a paper, the, uh, if they're based on real logic, and I'm going to give you some examples of real logic, in the uh, second part of this show today, each show has three parts, by the way. Second part of the show today, I'm going to go over some real-life examples of logic that you can use to invest. Logic that I use to invest. And in, uh, I think you'll agree. It's pretty simple. And it probably makes more sense than somebody who in invests in an index fund, like a Russell 1000, uh, which is... Uh, fine or the S&P 500 I think they make more sense than that cuz and let me explain why when you put money 
into a market cap weighted index. That phrase you should become familiar with anytime you hear it or market weighting or market weighted. There are a bunch of them. I need to put up a blog post on this now that I'm talking about it. The, uh, um, whenever you hear that, what they're doing with the money is they're putting more money into the companies that are bigger than they are the companies that are smaller. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you think that a smaller company, a $2 billion company is going to grow faster than a $200 billion company? Obviously. Is a $2 billion company going to have an ability to grow faster than a $20 billion company? Probably. So why would you put more money in the $200 million or the $20 billion company than when you would put in the $2 billion company? Because you don't know any better. <laughs> and because you're, it's popular, it's extremely popular, and it's been incredibly popular since 2009. Since the, the end of the crash, March of 2009, it's been incredibly popular for people to buy the bigger names because they didn't lose all their money. Well, neither did the other ones, by the way, a lot of the other ones. A lot of the smaller ones have gone up exponentially relative to what those have gone up by. And if you got a handful of those in your portfolio, it's probably helped you out, despite the fact that more people have been putting money into the bigger names first and, and they haven't gotten around to your stocks as much yet. Yeah, that's probably going to happen sometime over the next year or two. The reason I say that, and I rarely make uh, those types of observations public, but it's because the valuations, the stocks that the really big companies right now are not growing that fast and they're no longer cheap. They're not undervalued. The really big stocks are not underpriced. A lot of your smaller and medium-sized companies who haven't done quite as well over the past four or five years are. So they're growing faster and they're more undervalued. Sooner or later, that matters. Sooner or later, the market does getting, it's like America. You know, people laugh about America. They say Americans get around to doing the right thing eventually. And that's the same way the stock market works. The market will eventually recognize the better values and the share prices will start to improve. Now, if I could know exactly when that is, <laughs> that's what we got to work on. Anyway, you're listening to Bill Bullington right here on 1420 The Answer. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. And we're back. You know, I forgot to give out the phone number today. It's 216-901-0945. If you have a question regarding investments or investment planning, the uh, it's what we do, Bullington Capital, investment, investment planning. Probably the number one most important item in the financial planning realm. Also the one that is most neglected <laughs> or just glossed over. That happens quite often. You know, people, uh, yeah, for whatever reason. See, my, my opinion is if you don't do well enough in your investments, you won't have to worry about the rest of financial planning because you don't have any money to plan for. You hear what I'm saying? The, uh, it takes a lot of money to be able to retire. And it, I mean a lot of money to be able to retire. And if you're interested in getting a retirement plan analysis, then we'll do it for you. And in fact, I can do it really quickly right here, right now. Just take whatever Social Security or pension you might have. Let's figure out what that is. Let's figure out what the uh, um, your income is. We need to take 80% of that, then subtract what you're going to get from Social Security or your pension. And then the, the balance there, we need to figure out how to fund that, how much money you need to replace that gap. And that's it. That's financial planning. <laughs> how easy was that? Uh, it's easy for me because I've been doing it for a long time. But uh, if you have problems with it or you want to talk about it, uh, feel free to uh, uh, give us a call you know, in at the office. Some other services I'll probably mention. Uh, and I just see my uh, old buddy uh, here showing up. The uh, Ed Flash Ferrans is going to be joining us on the show here within the next few minutes. And uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, Nari's uh, home show. It's here. I, I, I forgot what the date is, so he'll tell us. But he's got some free tickets. 
So you might want to uh, start manning all your, your phones in the house to dial in really quickly uh, when you're going to get some free tickets. You can get a, I'm going to actually just invite them into the studio now. <laughs> so, hey, Flash, I just told everybody you're just walking into the studio. So I'll give you a second here to get uh, hooked up, and uh, you can move that anywhere you want. Uh, but yeah, so the home show is coming to town and, uh, uh, I always, I love going to that, by the way, it's a, uh, it's a great experience. Uh, and your home, incidentally, we were just talking a little bit about retirement planning. Your home is one of the bigger expenses that you're ever going to have in, uh, uh, keeping it up, taking care of it. Uh, you spend a lot of money on it, want to get a good value there. Uh, it is something you should be, uh, should be talked about more, I think with a, uh, a lot of younger people, particularly in, uh, um, anyway, I see I have a phone call coming in here. We're going to, uh, should I just pick it up? Yeah. All right. I'll guess I'll wait for a second. Get the board operator, find out who it is. Uh, let's see. And while we're waiting with a dead silence, there, <laughs> here we go. Frank, how you doing? Good. How are you today? Pretty good. You have a question for I was for wondering, it? uh, what, uh, would you, uh, suggest people do with this new administration coming in with, uh, you know, the stock market as far as whether it's going to be positive in certain sectors or which ones would you suggest are the most, uh, you know, have the most potential? Well, the ones that have the most potential, um, I think regulations, you know, deregulation is probably going to um, be a rule of the day for a while. So I think a lot of your um, oil and gas probably be, do very well under the new administration. Uh, I think the metals, you know, aluminum, steel, probably going to do very well. Those stocks, by the way, they're moving right now. Uh, so uh, you don't want to wait too late because you will miss the boat on that. But um, uh, those are already doing well, should do well under the new administration. The, uh, in fact, there are a lot of stocks that are going to do well. The, the economy uh, broadly will do relatively well if he follows through on some of the things that have already been put in motion, by the way, by the former administration. He's just picking up where they left off. They budgeted a ton of money for infrastructure, and then uh, Congress refused to release the funds. So there's an awful lot of money just sitting there that's actually going to be spent. And, uh, you know, of course, this president's going to take credit for it. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> I don't care. Well, what about, as long what as it about gets the utilities done. with what the EPA uh, is... Uh, Still going after uh, utilities and trying to, in the automotive industry, trying to ratchet down these standards for the future. Well, I think that if that happens, if they're successful doing that, then their profit margins improve and they'll probably sell more cars and make more money on it. If it doesn't happen, they've already been living under the auspices of the current uh, rule system the way that it is, uh, and they'll still do well. You know, we almost hit a record this year for cars being sold. The economy is improving. It is improving uh, fairly significantly. And uh, it may not be obvious to, to people uh, in this area, uh, but there are a lot of areas in the country that uh, are growing very, very fast, uh, not to the same speeds you might have had in the you know, late 90s or the uh, mid 80s, but it's a big improvement over what we've seen over the past 10 to 15 years. So, um, yeah, I'm, I, I think that will do well no matter who is in office, by the way. Uh, just the way that cycles have a tendency to work. They're much longer than you would anticipate them to be. And uh, it's, it's time. You know, it's coming around. Things are picking up. Uh, what can he do? If they put a lot of taxes on a lot of imports, you can bet that the, uh, the steel makers, U.S. Steel, uh, um, all the other, uh, I forget what the symbols are now. I was trying to think of the symbols really quickly. I'm U.S. Steel, I think, is X, and uh, AK, yeah, AKS, uh, C A C E N X. You look at the charts on those things; they look like um, growth stocks, and uh, everybody's anticipating, you know, that things are going to get really good for them. And if they do get good, the stocks will probably keep going. If they don't, they'll come back down again. So, uh, uh, you know, that's already started, by the way. They're not waiting for it to actually happen. They're assuming it's already happening. So this is where the expectations come into play. If they, come, if, if they don't do as well as they thought they are going to do, those stocks are going to pull right back again. If they do a lot worse than they thought they were going to do, they're going to pull back a lot. 
if they come in slightly ahead of the expectations, you'll see them keep running really fast. So that, I wouldn't. Uh, I, I am really hesitant to tell people what to buy and sell anymore. I think you, you really need a strategy. Uh, like one of the strategies I like, my high dividend model, I just buy the highest dividend yielding stocks from the 11 major sectors that make up the stock market, and I look at it every quarter and I rebalance it. Well, I don't have to, it does, there's a lot of transactions there. Um, the, the custodian I use doesn't charge fees for that. I absorb their, their fee, which is 0.25% uh, in my management fee. I know people are not going to do that. The, uh, they will not do that on their own. 9,900, 99,000 people out of 100,000 will not do that. They won't monitor it. They won't run those screens. They won't rebalance the portfolio. It's too much work. They don't have enough time in their day. Okay, And that's one of the reasons I have a job. It's not because I'm a whole lot smarter than anybody else. I could teach anybody to do what I'm doing, but I can't give them the time to do it. You hear what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah. um, that's why I have a job. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad to have it. So, but I think there are a lot of things that are going to happen. It's going to be really interesting, really interesting, as uh, this guy's inherited an economy that's been that's been held back, and now you know they're going to have uh, a lot. They'll be a lot freer to do a lot of things with uh, Republican Senate and Congress. So, you know, it's interesting if they do it responsibly, we will generate benefits that last for ten, maybe twenty years. If they do it irresponsibly. Pardon me? This would be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, now, if it's done irresponsibly, it will still be fantastic for a while. <laughs> just just a whole lot shorter, and then it ends up in another another bust. So, But I'm, uh, uh, I'm really optimistic over the next two, three years. I think it's, uh, you know, it's time. It's due. Uh, if we do well, you watch what happens to the emerging markets and the uh, international markets, which have been lagging for almost you know, 12 years now. The uh, those things are are growing faster than ours. Their companies are, and they're more undervalued than ours are. So, eventually, that too, that ship will get righted too. Those things will probably have a a, a year where they put up forty or fifty percent returns in one year. So uh, you just have to be cognizant, watching for that. I have a model, by the way, that monitors that, and we'll move into those categories when they start to do that. But the uh, uh, it's tough when you're going choppy sideways though, because it keeps switching around and not uh, really making much money. Uh, you're lucky if you don't lose money. But when the move does come, everybody goes, wow. <laughs> so you don't want to do that with all your money. That's maybe 15%, 20% of your, uh, your portfolio would be the most. But, but I'm optimistic, very optimistic. Do you have uh, anything else for us? Uh, do you have any of those uh, tickets to the Nari show? <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you have tickets, Flash? I got plenty of tickets. Um, here's what we're going to do, though. Because the show starts Thursday, Okay. we're going to leave them at will call. Okay. So if you um, just want to go off air here, leave your name, and I'll leave you. How about it? You want a four-pack? Four-pack yeah, of tickets? Okay. Okay. Yeah, All right, Frank, I'm going to put you on hold, and uh, we're going to get your name, and we will leave that at uh, – Flash is going to have leave that at will call for you. Okay, thanks, Bill. All right, thanks for calling. Yeah, we'll see you at the show. Sure. And Flash! Hey, buddy, how are you doing? <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a <laughs> long time. Uh, this is awesome. You know, I was just looking at my notes. You and I used to do uh, this financial show back, what was it, late 90s, early yeah. 2000s, on another radio station. And I know you moved over here, and we were doing it together. And it was a fun time. You've done I, – I can't believe you're still going still, at it Still here. doing it. <laughs> still cranking it. Sounding yeah. good. I listen to you all the time. Oh, thanks. The uh, Yeah, we're on uh, iTunes now. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, I heard – I heard, I heard picked it up too, so uh, that's pretty cool. Very cool. But uh, yeah, it's uh, great to hear your uh, your big booming voice again. <laughs> I'm still I'm still going strong. I'm uh, forty. Let's see, forty three or forty four years of broadcasting now. Wow, that's, actually forty four. Okay, you know more than half the people weren't born. <laughs> I know that. Thanks for bringing that up. I appreciate yeah, hey, that. <laughs> look, at, look at my hair. I know. <laughs> What's and left I'm, of it. And I've been doing this show. This is my 18th year for the Nari Home Improvement Show. This is the show that kind of really changed Ed Flash Ferentz because, as you know, I worked at MMS for 21, 22 years, right. and then I worked in talk radio for a couple of years. I'm still doing that on another station. But uh, when I saw the industry changing in the 90s, I decided to get into PR and advertising. And uh, I got hired to do the Nari show in 1999. Wow. That was the first one we did. And, uh, <laughs> and I thought, figured, oh, this is a one-shot wonder. I'll do this. 
here we are 18 years later and we're still going at it. And I have to say this because it, it's been, you know, it, it, just like stocks, you know, nothing, right. nothing goes right. in a straight line. Right. And you know what happened in 07 and 08 sure. with the financial crisis right. yep. and it was the housing market that virtually collapsed. Right. Well, I want to tell you, speaking from the exhibitor's point of view and the NARI organization, we have come back. I mean, we are sold out almost. In fact, we have to purchase more. There's a certain wow. amount of the IX Center. We don't take, obviously, we don't take right, the whole sure. IX Center, but we have to contract for more space. We have over 200 or close to 200 vendors right now. And uh, it, about a month ago, we reached our goal from last year because a lot of people from last year said, yeah, I want to be in the show next year. And they committed. So it's been wonderful. So all I can tell you is uh, from 2008, it's been it's been a struggle, but we've got everyone back and then some. That's so we're awesome. really excited this year. And we're seeing that all throughout the entire economy. I, I watched that uh, a lot closer. It's a lot easier now since uh, <laughs> a few years ago. Actually, it's only been three years now. I sucked it up and subscribed to a Bloomberg terminal. Uh huh. Right, well, that's like uh, the price now that I, I'm getting a discount. Right, it's like twenty six hundred a month. A wow. month. A month. <laughs> and uh, that is killing me. Yeah, uh, so I moved into really cheap office space. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I moved into really cheap is, office space. Is it a closet? <laughs> no. Actually, it's very nice. I'm yeah. surprised. The uh, I got it at a really good time because we moved there in 2009 and got the low real estate prices. You yeah, know, so, because uh, of the crash. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you so, got to take advantage that, of that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that worked out really well for us. But it, you should see, they, they have 13,000, more than 13,000, actually, it's a little bit more than that, um, journalists that uh, that are also, many of them are analysts that also have to write. So they really uh, follow this intensely. Uh -huh. If there's anything you want to know about any industry or any company that's legal for you to know, <laughs> I can find it. Nice. If it's not in there, you're not supposed to know it. And if you do know it, you better not act on it because you don't have enough money to defend yourself to those high-priced SEC lawyers that are going to come looking for you. Right. <laughs> the, uh, but uh, it's pretty cool. It's really cool. So my dad was a uh, remodeling contractor. And uh, we probably built more garages than anything else, uh, and um, but a lot of ruminations and stuff. I just had an accident in my condominium, so I had to have my whole kitchen done. A, a pipe burst and just flooded the whole place. Oh, yeah, that was man. Talk about brutal insurance job then, huh? Yeah, yeah. Those so, are the best kind, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. well, it, it was great. The yeah. um, and I, uh, I just I, then I, I just took advantage of the fact. Okay, you guys are paying for the majority of this. I just added some extras in there myself. Yeah, yeah. It's a really kind of fun thing to do. But I was amazed. You should see the materials are so much lighter. They're so much stronger. My floor, you could drop a bowling ball on it. It's not going to break. Right. The uh, It's impervious to water. Yeah. Um, you can run your... Your vacuum over it, so nice. I don't even have to sweep anymore. It's amazing. <laughs> All the products today, even the carpeting today, they have carpeting that's made out of uh, pop bottles. Oh, for the recycled plastic. Cool. Yeah. Hey, we're gonna have to take a real co commercial break. You're listening to uh, Flash and Bill. <laughs> on back Portland. at it. Yeah. We'll be back after these messages. <laughs> and coming back. It's the uh, Flash and Bill show this morning. <laughs> uh, we're going to be giving away some NARI tickets. Uh, Flash, I'll let you talk to uh, the public about that. It's the uh, 2017 NARI Home Improvement Show, and it's the 36th annual Home Improvement Show. This is something that started back in the uh, 80s, and uh, like I said before in the previous segment, uh, it had some ups and downs just like, just like stocks, sure. and we have come back with flying colors. About 200 vendors will be there. The show starts Thursday, January 19th. In fact, I'm going to be with Kenny Crumpton that morning. Oh. We're going to be broadcasting from the nice. show floor uh, at the IX Center. And what we have this year, every year they have a different kind of feature. And this year what we did, we took two remodelers. Remodel Me Today out of uh, Olmstead Falls and Land Creations Landscaping out of the same general area. They've been in the show a couple of years but not remodel me today, and we've created what we call the Master Suite Retreat. I heard in a commercial about that. I was going to ask you about that. Okay. That, that... It's almost 3,000 square feet. Wow. And uh, think about that. <laughs> that. That's bigger than most homes, right. Sure. all right? Yep. It's a master bedroom with a master bath, and from the master bath you can exit this courtyard, 
and that's your landscaped area with a hot tub, a wine bar, cappuccino bar, and it's multi-level. I mean, it is futuristic, and it's also being described as kind of like a romantic getaway in your own home. Right. So if you have some kids that you want to, okay, you got to shut the door. Sorry, we're going to see you in a couple hours. Yeah, or a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of years. But uh, we took two top remodelers, and anybody that is a participant in the uh, Nari Home Improvement Show, we're talking about quality contractors. You know the fact that oh, sure. your family's been in right. the industry. You see a lot of these people that think they can put a tool belt on and become a remodeler. Uh, it's hard. Yeah. And, it, it, and it hurts the good contractors. Yeah. That's the, you know, when you got somebody that's saying, well, well, I do this. Well, I don't know. The last guy burned me. And so you have to, sure. you know, have right. to climb that Absolutely. mountain to, yeah. to explain what you're all about. Nari takes all that away. If you want to become a member of Nari, you have to go through a, pretty much a testing process. Sure. You have to be in business. You have to be insured. You have to be bonded. You got to do all the right things. And Nari also, if you go to their website, Greater Cleveland Nari, they have questions that you can ask a remodeler so you know. And if they don't answer it properly, you know what? Next. Yeah. <laughs> Next. <laughs> exactly. And it's always important, you know this. Sure. Get three estimates if right. you're doing a kitchen or bath right. and get a good feeling because I had my kitchen done. My artistic renovations they advertise on this radio yeah. station. I've known them. They've been in the show for a number of years. And it took three months to do our kitchen. You, you wow. know, you know, you're inviting yeah. somebody right. into your home for three months. Right. You, it's almost like they become part of your family. Yeah. So at you, that point, <laughs> you want to make sure you're bringing right. somebody in there that knows right. what they're doing. Yep. And 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 it was it's it, I tell you it's it, it was a great experience with artistic, oh. and I would recommend them to anybody. That's awesome. Uh, you heard Joyce Factory Direct. They right. they do wonderful windows. All these people. And here's the beauty of this. A lot of people that come to the show, they have done their homework. They're ready to rock and roll. Right. They want a contractor. You're going to find it there at this show. That's right. real simple. That's awesome. i got to take a phone call. This guy's been holding for 11 minutes. Oh, boy. Hey, hey Jerry, you must really want those tickets bad. Hey, hey, I'd love to have some. <laughs> well, That'd when, be wonderful. Is that an offer? Yeah, oh, absolutely. As soon as oh. we're done, um, hang on because the board operator will take your uh, information and we'll leave the tickets at will call. How, how many would you like Flash to leave um, for you? Two, how about four? You want four? No problem. Yeah. By the way, uh, they're $14 for adults, 16 and under free. For you, of course, they're all free. All right? Of course. No, that's great. Uh, okay. And also, those of you who do not get through, if you go to narihomeshow.com, you get a two dollar discount, so the fourteen goes to twelve. They're also those discounts are also available at Circle K and Discount Drug Mart and Mister Hero locations. So you can get a little submarine there and a discount on your ticket. Okay, submarine sandwich that is not a submarine. It's <laughs> <laughs> funny. And uh, hey, Jerry, do you have a question for me? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I got a call from a friend um, okay. this, this afternoon or this morning. Excuse me. He was talking about a stock which I just was looking at and. Uh, I, I think I know what you're going to tell me about it, but I'd just like to hear a little analyst. Uh, sure. Sarepta Therapeutics. S E S R P T. Uh, he's been on a wild ride with it. Uh, he's, his timing has been impeccable. Uh, but uh, he said that it's a real trading stock. I'm just curious what you might think about it, Bill. Right now it's about uh, uh, right in the middle, but it's been between 8 and $63 this year. Whoa. Yeah. That, that... Those are that's the way that those stocks have a tendency to run, mm-hmm. and uh, um, anything that's like a, a biotech stock, they're extremely volatile. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you're doing those, I I'm not a big fan of investing in those. Oh. And if I were going to be an yeah. investor, okay, if I'm going to hang on to this, if I think it's got some value, it's got to have a tremendous amount of value. Meaning. If I look at the enterprise value, that's the the cost of buying the entire company, okay? Uh-huh. The cost of buying it, so I'm going to take this all the stock and all the debt. Why am I looking at that? You know, and people ask me this all the time. Why do you do that? I'm not going to buy the whole company. Yeah, but you should be acting like you are going to, of if if you're going to be an investor, okay? Uh-huh. So uh, if I look at that enterprise value, and then I look at the the amount of cash they're generating, just the operating income, and it's not at least. 10%, I am not interested. Uh-huh. 
that is. I think you're going to find it is not making anywhere close to ten percent. Right. Uh, so if it's if it's not there, I'm just not interested. Now, as a trade, you know that stock actually came up on one of my uh, scans uh, three four days ago because uh-huh, uh-huh. it was up a lot in one day, uh-huh. and it was a big spike in volume. Right, right. So if I were to trade it, you would you would buy it. Uh, just buy it on the open and put your stop in about 10% below your purchase price or below the low of the, that big that big range day, which is a lot further away. It's like 20% or so. Uh-huh. So you wouldn't be putting a lot of money into it. No, heavens no. Yeah. So, but no, the, I wouldn't be buying it at this price. I'm wondering if it dips down a bit, uh, perhaps. Um, well, you see know, if, going, but going I, you know, and I, I wish I could pull up my uh, uh, the other software. I, I didn't load it up okay. this morning, but. Uh, uh, I would look at the uh, uh, again the enterprise value. See how much how much is this thing yielding? If you were to put all, if you own the company, what kind of cash are you generating? What is that paying you? I'm going to just take a peek right here at this moment on the earnings. Uh, earnings, not forget earnings. That they okay. massage those numbers. You you have no idea what the real earnings are. The only people that have an idea what the the real earnings are are the ones that are manipulating the numbers that they present to the public. Well, and a lot of those guys don't don't have a really good idea because you think about it when you're doing billions of dollars in transactions, do you know how many moving parts there are there? Oh, incredible. Yeah, Yeah, of course. By the time you've gathered all the information, all the information has changed. Well, I'm just looking at the latest earnings estimate to give you an idea. It's going between uh, a loss of $1.15 and $1.48. Wow. So that, in, es- in essence, it's uh, not earning anything. It's losing money, yet it um, has been cleared by the FDA on, in several areas. So it's, it, as I say, it's certainly a, a trading stock, nothing more yeah. than that. I just was curious. Yeah. And as a trade, yeah. as a trade, it just gave a, uh, depending on what type of trader you are, it just gave a short term buy signal four, four days ago. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. You, you could buy it, put a tight stop on it. And if it goes, it goes. If it doesn't, so well, it's just another trade. It's already seen some some action, but you're saying that uh, well, big a, big moves I, tend to begin and end with a bang. A big uh-huh. move tends to go really up a lot in one day, and then uh-huh. it keeps right on going. And by the way, that's the same way it's going to end. Right, right. <laughs> in a lot of I, cases, I, 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 a real sudden end, like running into a wall. Yeah, yeah. So that's the uh, that's that's one of the dangers of trading. You know, you're you're stepping into that, and uh, mm-hmm. you got to have a plan. So yeah. that does not exactly for the faint of heart. I'm not. I don't think I'm interested in it. But I just was casually wanted to pass that by. It's interesting. It did show up on your screen, though. Oh, yep. Hey, I've only got a minute left. I got to take another phone call here, Jerry. Thanks a lot for calling, though. Okay. What do I do about those tickets? Uh, hang on, and we're going to get your uh, information to leave it at sure. work. Call. Thanks. Hey, Brian. Actually, I'll probably just is, is this Brian Bidoff? Uh, Hi. <laughs> hey, uh, if you'll hang on, we'll get you tickets too, because I know you'll probably want to go. That's perfect. That's actually why I was calling. Thank oh, you. <laughs> that, that, that's awesome. Uh, Brian's a, a realtor, by the way. Oh, so, okay. uh, and uh, he actually does some of this work. He's, he's bought a couple homes and flipped them, uh, probably inspired a little bit by HGTV, I think, Brian. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, hang on. We'll get your information. And uh, for the rest of you, thanks for listening. I'll be on uh, next Saturday morning, 11 o'clock. Same sta- station, same time have a good week everybody and uh flash thanks for coming in my pleasure we'll see you to the show thank you you just caught another episode of the bullington capital report broadcasting every saturday morning at 11 a.m on am 1420 the answer if you have a question and would like to speak to Bill personally, you can call him at 330-664-0700. That's 330-664-0700. Or contact him through his website, BullingtonCapital.com. That's BullingtonCapital.com. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. Therefore, no current or prospective client should assume that the future performance of any specific investment, investment strategy, including the investments and or investment strategies recommended and or purchased by advisor or product made reference to directly or indirectly will be profitable. Different types of investment involve varying degrees of risk, and there can be no assurance that any specific investment will either be suitable or profitable for a client's investment portfolio. No client or prospective client should assume that any information presented serves as the receipt of or substitute for personalized investment advice 
guidance from the advisor or any other investment professional. The preceding program has been paid for by Bullington Capital Management, LLC. The preceding program's views, claims, or representations may not reflect those of AM 1420 The Answer or Salem Media Group.